By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome at Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are looking at a game from the Troll Cup, an old school magic event in Leeuwarde, the Netherlands. And the players here are playing according to the Swedish rules with Ravenna reprint policy. So that means that you can use reprints from sets like Revised for Edition Chronicles as long as it's the same art and the same frame. Now this first match here at this tournament, I mean it is a big one because we have two famous decks going head to head here. We have the deck versus Urnum on Ice. Now I do not have any deck pictures but I am going to do a short deck tech. If you'd like to go to the games straight away you can check the description below. There you will find a timestamp. Click on the timestamp and it will take you straight to game number one. So the first deck that I would like to look at with you is the deck, so the classic control deck. And since I don't have a deck picture, I've taken a hand, an opening hand with kind of some um, cards that represent the build. And what we see here in, in the first card that I've chosen is the Tome. And what the Tome does, you know, for four it draws you a card, which is actually pretty good in old school magic. And for me that kind of symbolizes um, the tactic of the deck. So the deck wants to control you and then slowly draw more cards than you. And because of that card advantage, eventually you will win. And you see those other spells, the counter spell and the swords to plows here, they are kind of control elements. So you do a lot of one for one trades. You counter uh, the spells with swords, you destroy the creatures. There are also four disenchants in there. So you're kind of having control with these one on one trades. And then of course you want to deal damage. Well, actually, the deck is a slow and grinding deck with long matches, so you don't really care about dealing that much damage. The damage will come from a controlling position. Once you control the board, once you have card advantage, you will eventually win. So there is a full playset of Mishra's Factories. They are great because they cannot be countered. And also, once you control the whole situation, you can start dealing 2 damage, 3 damage, 4 damage, you know, they pump each other. It's a very strong card, of course. And I believe that um, in this deck, Peter, he's the player who's going to play the deck today, he has Fireball as a finisher. So that's why I put Fireball in this opening hand. So Fireball is the most important um, finisher elements. Uh, some some of the deck players prefer playing with a creature, for instance, one Sarah Angel or a couple of creatures. Some of uh, the deck players actually prefer not to have any finishers at all. They simply try to do it with their mistress factories or try to deck their opponent. So there are a few different strategies here, but in this deck he's going to going for that big fireball finisher. So I'm curious to see um, if he's going to actually succeed because the deck that he's up against is Urnum on Ice. So let's take a look at that deck. And here we see the opening hand or a possible opening hand for the deck Urnum on Ice, so seven cards. And obviously I've started with the Urnum Jin and the Ice Storm. Now the idea of this uh, deck, and it's uh, the, the big difference by the way with Urnum Geddon is that you don't play with Armageddon, but you play with a full play set of Ice Storms, hence the name Urnum on Ice instead of Urnum Geddon. And the main idea, what we want to see is that you're going to kind of ramp in mana, so you can use a Lanor else for that. I believe that the player who's playing this today, Yup Vak, um, he's playing with a full playset of Lanor Elves, so he's kind of the, the founder as well of Urnum on Ice. It's going to be interesting to see him play with, with his build and the choices that he has made. So he's playing with a full playset of Lanor Elves instead of, for instance, a Birds of Paradise. Some people prefer the Birds of Paradise uh, for obvious reasons. Some people prefer the Lanor. Um, I, I guess, you know, with, with the Lanor Elf, you can deal damage, uh, but besides that when we go back to what the deck wants to do the deck wants to ramp mana quickly so get ahead of the mana curve and then in turn two or you know if need be in turn three play an ice storm for some land destruction and then with that take even more advantage uh, by playing an urnum Jin as fast as turn three or, or you know, sometimes even turn two if you've got your know, soul ring and some mocks in and, and everything's working out also, there's a full white control package in this deck. So in this hand, you can see a balance and a disenchant. Uh, but Yup is also playing with, of course, four swords and four disenchants and a balance. Now, there are no blue cards in this deck, but blue is definitely represented. He's playing with a Brain Geyser and an Ancestral Recall. I do believe he's also playing with a Time Walk. 
and in the land section there you see the Pendlehaven, which I believe the Pendlehaven plays a big part with that whole Lanoir Elf Birds of Paradise discussion, because Pendlehaven of course can be used to pump the Lanoir Elves and deal some extra damage. So when you compare these two decks, you could say that they both have controlling elements with that white control package, but Urnum on Ice is definitely the more aggressive deck and the deck is definitely the more controlling uh, deck. Interesting to mention here is that the Urnum on Ice player is playing with three Sylvan Libraries. So I believe those Sylvan Libraries are going to be very important to give the Urnum player some card advantage as well and kind of pick the right spells at the right time. So I think that it's for the deck player it's going to be important to keep a check on those Sylvan Libraries because it can get out of hand fast when they hit the table. Okay, so enough talk about the decks we've seen it they're both two tier one decks very exciting first game here first match here at the troll cup in leovada and let's go to game number one game number one here at the Afton troll cup in leovada and on the left we have peter who's the deck player on the right we have Yup. Who's playing with his signature deck, Urnum on Ice. And I believe Yoop is on the play here. Let's see if they're going to keep their hands. Tropical Island into a Lanor Elf. So that's the start that you want to have when you're the Urnum player. Let's see what the deck can do. Look at that. A Library of Alexandria. Does he have an Ice Storm? No, but he does have a Time Walk here, but no Land Drop. And again, no Land Drop, but he does play a Sylvan Library. I think that's definitely something that Peter has to keep in check here. That's what I talked about in the deck tech as well, that Sylvan is very important for the Urnum player. But of course, the deck player has the library, and will there be a Swords now to take care of that Lanowar Elf? There's no Swords, so are we going to see an Ice Storm? And look at that, <laughs> he's drawing three cards, paying eight life, going to 12, playing very aggressively here. What's his plan here? Playing a Black Lotus. No Ice Storm yet. Is he just going to play? And look at that. Tapping five. And there's the Sarah Angel. I'm liking this. He's playing super aggressively. He's saying, you know what? You get your cards. I'm just going to basically deal as much damage as pos possible and put on full pressure here. And now after using the Loa, drawing his extra card just from his draw step here. So drawing two cards, having nine in hand now, playing a City of Brass. What are we going to see next? And this is already a very exciting match. Two tier one decks. Both of these decks can possibly win this tournament here. And we see Yoop gaining four life because of the Sarah. And that's the nice thing about the Sylvan. The four life are worth an extra card. So Yoop can now basically choose an extra card. That's exactly what he does. And he's still on the same life total that he was before. He's still on 12. So that means card disadvantage here for the deck player. But of course, a deck player has an active library. And there we see an Urnum Jin. So more pressure here from the Urnum player. Is there a quick response though? Going to 19 here and playing an Ancestral Recall. I wanted to say a Swords to Plows here, but it's an Ancestral Recall. So even more cards here for the deck player. And I'm sure he's found a Swords, but of course he's not gonna play it until the combat phase. Playing a Mox Pearl here. And with the combat phase, I mean the combat phase of his opponent. Playing a Soul Ring. And what is he going to do next? No book. And let's see again, having that option with the Sylvan, looking at the cards. Paying life again, going to eight here. Playing at Pendlehaven, so there's some nice synergy here between Pendlehaven and the Lanower Elves. Animating the factory, using the Pendlehaven for that. Interesting choice. Attacking with everything here. And there's that Swords that I talked about earlier. So again, four more life. That means that basically Yoop can draw another extra card next turn without really having to pay for that. And he's playing a Chaos Orb now. And there is a Counter Spell. So that's a good Counter Spell here. Too bad, because I would have loved to see a flip. But the deck player is still under pressure on 12 life. So he's still got, got some margin. But there are a lot of Lana Rails on the other side of the table. Let's see what he can do. Tapping for four here. Paying another life because of the City of Brass. Oh, there's a Mind Twist for three. His hand is gone. Brutal. But the creatures are still on the board, so pressure is still very much possible here. And again, drawing an extra card. I, I'm really liking the way he's playing with the Sylvan. Eight life now. Animating, attacking. 
Boom! What are we going to see here? There's a pump, of course, so that means six damage. The deck player on five life and with an active library of Alexandria. It's fantastic here. And this is the proof that you don't always need to deal with that library if you just can put on maximum pressure and, of course, have a Sylvan a draw mechanic of your own. That's very important. Without the Sylvan, this game would have been under control for the deck player. Look at that, a balance. Exciting. But that does mean that he's going to deactivate his own library of Alexandria because he has to go down in hand size. I believe there are two cards there for the Urnan player. But I do believe it's a good move because, you know, he had to get rid of all those Lunar Elves. And finding it hard to make that final decision. Unfortunately, we cannot see because of the glare in that graveyard area. And again, not choosing to draw an extra card this time, only being on 8. Playing an Urnum Jin, so even more pressure on the board. And choosing not to animate the factory because of that Maze of If passing turn here. And tapping for 4. And there's the Tome, another key card of the deck. Oh man, but that Sylvan can do some serious work here. And again, <laughs> again taking an extra card, going to 4 life. What is he going to do? What's his plan? Tapping another Urnum Jin. Oh, this is an important choice, I believe, because it gives him life as well. Again, an extra card playing that Divine Offering, taking care of that Tome, and there's no counter spell here. There is that Mace, so at least the deck player, Pater, is not taking any damage this turn, but what can he do? And remember, this I mean, this is fascinating. He has had an active Library of Alexandria for the most part of this first game. He has had a Mind Twist, he has had an Ancestral Recall, and still he's under full pressure, paying a life here. Interesting. And a demonic tutor, and what will he tutor for? I honestly don't know. Balance is not in his deck anymore, he's played it out. And if he wants to get Balance back, that's gonna take him a turn, and that's a luxury he cannot afford. Maybe just Swords? A Time Walk, perhaps? But that's taking a mighty big risk. What can he take here? And there is a Swords, and remember, again, for life equals a card. So that means that Yoop can just draw two cards now, basically for free. And he's not doing it. He doesn't even need it. That's interesting. Or there was nothing useful, of course. That's also an option. Tapping the Soul Ring. Tapping two more mana, four mana there. And he's playing... Oh, <laughs> he's playing a Regrowth on the Time Walk. And first he's going to attack, and after this one he's going to have an extra turn. So he's going to two, taking the extra turn. And that's it, that's game! Wow! <laughs> I mean, sorry, but I just love seeing this Urnum on Ice deck, like, in full swing, playing against an active library of Alexandria. And he hasn't played a single Ice Storm in this game. So even without Ice Storms, you can see how incredibly powerful uh, this deck is. So both of these players are going to their sideboards, and uh, let's get back to them in game number two. Game number two. And it means that the deck player is probably choosing to be on the play here. And uh, wow, what a, f <laughs> what a game one. I really, I really enjoyed that very aggressive way of playing with that Sylvan Library. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Please do. And uh, let's see if the deck player can make it 1-1 one, one and, and if we are going to get a third game for this first match here. And there we see a mulligan from Peter, the deck player. We're playing according to the London mulligan rule. And uh, with that rule, when you take a mulligan, you get to draw seven cards again. And if you choose to keep, you put one of those cards on the bottom. And for every time that you mulligan, you put an extra card on the bottom of your library. I have to say when the London mulligan rule was introduced, I was a little bit you know, worried that certain decks, especially combo decks, might take too much advantage. Um, but so far, it's it's working out really well at the tournaments um, that played it, where I've played, that, that used the London Mulligan rule. So, so far, my experiences with it is that it's better than the old Mulligan rule. There's another Mulligan here. Wow. So that means he's going to five. 
Let me know, by the way, what your experience, um, if you want to, of course, what your experience with the London Mulligan rule is. If you think, okay, certain decks have too much advantage or certain decks are in a, in a disadvantage. Um, you know, some people say that it's not very good for aggro decks. Um, so it's better for the, for the mid-range decks and, the, and especially the combo decks. Like I said, I have very good experiences with it from my own experience playing it at like two or three tournaments now that have used a lot of Mulligan rule, but yeah, let me know. And there we see, now I guess Peter is keeping his hand this time, putting two cards on the bottom, starting with five and being on the play. That's pretty rough. And starting here with a Mox and a Tundra. And there's a Pendlehaven. No Lana or Elf this time. An Underground Sea. But remember, the deck has a lot of card draw mechanics going for it, so it could come back here. And there's a tap. Is there another Sylvan again? No, there's a Disenchant. Interesting choice. And the Urnum player, Yoop, is not afraid to make choices here. If it's going, if it's the right choice, time will tell. And here there is the Mishra's Factory. And an untap here. And Yoop is taking his turn, drawing his card, looking at his hand. Playing a Strip Mine here, okay. Interesting choice again, going for the Tundra and not going for Mishra's Factory. Oh, that's maybe why, playing an Argovian Pixies, a 2-1 creature from the Antiquities. And all damage dealt to it by... Oh, taking a beer. <laughs> this actually... Oh, it's not the special troll beer, because I know they had special troll beer at this event. Uh, which was really good, so um, thank you for that. Thank you, Ron. Ron is the organizer. Shout out to Ron. Great tournament, thank you. Um, and where was I? Oh yeah, so the Argovian Pixies, when it's dealt damage by an artifact, it's reduced to zero. The damage, that is. Um, and there is a regrowth on the strip mine, playing the strip mine, but there is a counter spell on the regrowth. So that plan didn't work out. And look at that, an ancestral recall. So that means that cards that he was losing because of the double mulligan, he has now got back uh, thanks to that ancestral recall. And playing a Chaos Orb, are we going to see an actual flip here? And we are seeing a flip here, and of course I've put it in slow mo. Let's take a look. Bam! And that's full on there. Not the best angle, but good flip. And that means Argovian Pixies, bye bye. Interesting to see here that, that Argovian Pixies is reason enough to use a Chaos Orb on. And tapping three here. Or not, okay. Tapping, no. <laughs> That's interesting, he kept changing. Playing Ancestral Recall. And after that, playing a Whirling Dervish. Interesting card here, and I believe this is from the sideboard. And perhaps this is just to add some extra aggression to his deck. I think the tactic of the Urnum player is he just wants to trample the deck player, not give him a chance to go to mid game. But just put as much pressure on him as possible. But of course we have that Mishra's Factory and that's going to make it difficult for him to attack at the moment. Of course he can also use the Pendlehaven on the Whirling Dervish because it's still small. It's 1-1. Protection from black and when it deals combat damage it gets a plus 1 plus 1 counter. And the deck player is passing turn here. Having only two cards in hand. And this is a completely different game than the first game. And there we see that Ice Storm that we didn't see in game one. And is Peter going to counter this? He is not, and that means an attack here. Pumping to two, three here, taking two damage, and of course getting a counter. And there we see Yoop taking a counter out of his bag. I believe that's a bag, by the way, that you got when you ordered one of those revised puzzle boxes, if you know what I mean, like those gift boxes, and there would be a bag in there from Magic. I believe it's it's that counter back that you got. And look at that. It's hard now to see what Peter's playing. Oh, he's playing a Brain Geyser for one. Or no, for two. He doesn't want to use those City of Brasses. He has counter ability now. And the Whirling Dervish is on two. Attacking here with the 2-2. Two, two. And this is interesting because... If Peter is deciding to play a Swords, he cannot counter anymore. And there's another Ice Storm, but there's a quick counter spell here. It doesn't mean that's going to cost him 2 life. It's going to 14. 
that Dervish should get an extra counter now, by the way. Look at that, an energy flux. Again, another card from the sideboard. And there's that counter. An energy flux is a card from the Antiquities and Enchantment we see quite a lot. And that means that Peter has to pay two during his upkeep for all his artifacts. In this case, the Mox Jet. Or let the Mox Jet be destroyed. He is paying for it. So does that mean that he has a Mind Twist or a Demonic Tutor in hand? But of course, he has also the Underground Sea and the City of Brass, so he doesn't really need the black mana from the Mox Jet. And there's a Disenchant. Kind of taking care of it, but it's it's actually not that big of a deal, it seems, at this point. But he has played the Disenchant nonetheless. Attacking again, that means that Whirling Dervish is going to 4-4 four, four now. And then even... A Mishra's Factory that can pump itself is not going to help him. Of course, it had Summoning Sickness in the previous combat step, so it, it made sense that Peter didn't use it as a blocker in that, uh, in that stage. And again, he's under pressure. I mean, he's still on 10 life, but there's a 4-4 Whirling Dervish. And let's see if you can put some more pressure on the board here. Paying two, and there are the Argovian Pixies again. Attacking now with the 4-4. He has to take four more damage, going to six. Look at that Whirling Dervish. It's doing so much work in this game. Oh, 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 and it, it, it looks like Peter is a little stuck here. Now, remember, he has already played his Brain Geyser and his Ancestral Recall. So maybe he's looking now for a balance. That would really be a nice card at this, at this moment. Being two, time walk perhaps, and there is a time walk. Ooh, going down here, two more lives, going to four, and that's so difficult with City of Brasses. Oh, wow, it's already the end of the game. What did he want to play out, actually? I mean, he's showing it. Oh, he wanted to play out a recall to get some cards back. Oh, man, and, and probably take care of those creatures. Ah, uh, well, that's it. That's game. And that means a uh, pretty convincing victory here for the Urnamon Ice deck over the deck player. And uh, really, really nice to see these games. Thank you, Joop and Peter, for this uh, match at the Efton Troll Cup in Leeuwarden, the Netherlands. Okay, and that was the first match from this tournament. Very entertaining. I must say when when I, I heard that the deck versus Urnamon Ice was going to be the first match on the stream i was like oh, i'm not sure but you know go ahead we'll see uh but this was really nice quality magic uh, really cool to look at if you'd like to see more uh, old school magic and you'd like to see more of this tournament keep an eye on the channel i will be posting more unfortunately i don't have all the matches but i have a few really nice ones and they're definitely going online as soon as i have enough time to edit them you know and 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 comment put my comments under them and and you know stuff like that uh for now thank you for watching timmy talks the channel where we talk old school magic and if you want to support the channel subscribe leave a like leave a comment it really helps share spread the love the old school magic 93 94 love because it's fantastic um and if you want to see more games browse around on the channel i have, I have so many games uh, for now, thank you for watching and see you next time.